So my dad knew what he needed to do. He needed to put food on the table. He knew how to work. So he, he got a job and he started working. And this is what my dad says today as a 70 year old man, right? <laughs> and my dad's funny, man. He'll just sit there sometimes and he'll marvel. He'll, he'll just marvel. He'll just say, wow, I've had the best life ever. My life is so amazing. And I don't know how I got here. I have no idea. This is what my dad was like. I have no idea how I got here. But I look around, my children, my grandchildren, my wife, my home. He's still working to this day. And he says, I didn't do anything. This is what he tells me. <laughs> He's like, I didn't do anything. My dad never had this idea of a calling you know, in, uh, in, in Catholicism, they call it vocation. What is, the, what is your vocation? There's a vocation. You're called to a vocation. And it was interesting when I started reading about that, you know, of course, they talk about voca the vocations in terms of becoming a priest or something like that. But I continued reading, and this was just some, where did I, I don't know where I found this, but this was a PDF that I downloaded some time ago. There was the vocation of being a father. And I, I picked that one up, I downloaded it. And the entire thing was about being present with your family and your responsibilities as a father. Not, uh, you know, high flying dreams, but very practical things. Are you being practical with what you've got? Are you taking care of your surrounding? That's really my question for you. Haran, I know that you're here and I know you, you uh, unmuted yourself. So. Share with me, where are you with that? What does it, how does that sound to you? Does that make sense or is there more? No, I think, uh, thanks again for, for the, your comments, man. I, I think that you hit it on the nail on your head when you said uh, you can't start anywhere else. I think that really hit me because you're right. You can, you can that flyboy analogy as well, I was kind of laughing because it's just it's exactly <laughs> what you said. You know, you can, you can say what you want to do. You can think about what you want to do, but at the end of the day, to get there, you have to look at where you are now, what your resources are around you, what your skills, your knowledge, your current situation is, and you just have to really internally analyze that. Um, I think I've probably got a bit of work to do on myself on this, this thoughts piece, because you know you said right at the start, don't believe your thoughts all the time. And I have to just get somewhere with that, maybe it's going back to the stillness that you said, but I need to get somewhere where I get a thought and I'm okay with just letting that go. I don't need to act on it. Um, so I think that's the work I need to do on myself right now. Yeah. yeah. Acknowledge it, but then let it go. And look, man, they'll stop coming. They'll stop haunting you when you stop acknowledging them. Because I have an active mind also. And it's gotten me into a lot of trouble because every thought, every whim, you know, I'm chasing, like chasing rabbits. <laughs> but as I've, you know, I'm listening to this book, Dark Knight of the Soul, and I see aspects of myself in very, in, I don't want to say more advanced it is a little bit more advanced, but I'm a little bit further down the path than, and I still got a lot of work to do. But one of the things he says is that when you, when you stop having those incessant thoughts, you know, you're sort of on the way when you can just rest, when you can just stop. And here's the thing, uh, what he, what he makes clear is that the spirit is very active. The spirit world is very, very, very active. <laughs> Even though we can't see it, we don't feel it, we don't sense it, your spirit is very active with guiding you on your path. Uh, so when you don't have those thoughts or when you let those thoughts just pass and they, and they stop coming and you start feeling arid, you start feeling dry, rather than worrying about it, because I used to worry, I'd be like, wow, I used to think I'm lazy now. I'm like, wow, I'm lazy. Or I would say, I have no motivation. You know, there's, and you know, I'm, I'm at a stage in my life where I've just learned how to be okay with no motivation. I have no motivation anymore. <laughs> as strange as that sounds. And it is the most freeing thing ever. I'm so grateful that I don't have any motivation anymore. And I don't, I'm not saying don't strive for your safety and security, but this need for novelty, this need for something new, this need to start something. Um, starts to reside starts to uh res reside and it starts it begins to remind me of living the life of a monk right these monks they take a vow of poverty 
they do nothing but allow themselves to be <laughs> right and i think when we just allow ourselves to be in fact i know this this is, comes from my dad's wisdom my father's wisdom my dad has been my dad has been fixing cars since he was like 17 years old he's going to be 70 next year from 17 to 70 he's been fixing cars never complained a day in his life about it never complains it's the weirdest thing but because my dad didn't grow up with all the sensual gratification and distractions that we grew up in my dad grew up in the jungle he didn't he didn't wear shoes until he was like 15 years old and came to america you know um so there wasn't all there was no ambition and ambition ambition is a is a can be a vice 